Hello students, welcome back to the online video tutorial of Smart Engineering Academy. So this is the part two of the module three. So in this session, I am going to cover some derivations and concepts. So here we'll come across with more than 10 formulas. It is highly difficult to remember. So I will teach you in some logics to remember these formulas. So this concept will be clear to you only if you had seen my part one of the video. So in that video, I had explained you clearly that what do you mean by sphere and what is great circle. So here we come across with the first concept that is spherical triangle. So first of all, what do you mean by spherical triangle? Spherical triangle is a triangle which is formed on the sphere by the intersection of three arcs on the great circle. See here. So this is the triangle. It is formed on the surface of the sphere. So the whole circle is sphere. It is formed okay, by the intersection of three arcs. That is, this is one arc, two arc and three arcs upon the great circle. See the thing what you are seeing here is great circle. This is horizon. This is great circle. This is sphere. All these basic concepts has been explained in the previous video. So this is spherical triangle. So what is the difference between the normal triangle and spherical triangle? See the normal triangle will be like this. The total angle in this normal triangle will be 180 degree. So spherical triangle means the same thing. I am drawing arcs here. Okay. The total angle will be more than 180 degree. So that is the difference between normal triangle and spherical triangle. So this is the spherical triangle. These are the points A, B and C and the angles at A is A, B and C and these are called as sides. That arc is called as sides that is represented in small letter A, small letter B and small letter C. Okay. So let us see. So what are the properties of this spherical triangle? So the first properties I told you the difference between the normal triangle and the spherical triangle. The normal triangle, it will have the total angle of 180 degree. That means in this, the total angle that is angle A, B and C or C should be more than 180 degree. So that is the first property. Second property is so if I take the sum of the angles that is A plus B plus C, it should be more than 180 degree and it should be less than 540 degree. So third property, if I take single angles that is angle A, angle B or angle C, it should not be more than 180 degree. So A plus B plus C, it should be more than 180 degree and second property is A plus B plus C, this thing. And if I take a single angle that is A, B and C, it should not be more than 180 degree. So the fourth property is smaller angle is opposite to the smaller sides. I'll just show, show you here. If I take this angle and I'll just compare that angle with this thing. Okay. Smaller angle. If I take this as a smaller angle, it is opposite to the smallest side. I told you this is the side and this is the angle. If I take this angle, it has largest side. If I take this, uh, this thing, it is the smallest angle. It is opposite to the smallest side. Okay. So these are the two important formulas that you can see in spherical triangle. One is sine rule and other one is cosine rule. So in this sine A by sine A, see here, sine A and the opposite side is caps A, sin A by sin A, which is equal to sin B by sin B, sin C by sin C. So this formula is very easy to remember. Fine. So cosine formula. For this, I will tell you some logics to remember. So you know the alphabet that is A, B, C. So cosine means cos, cos of A is equal to cos A minus cos B minus, sorry, into cos C. In the denominator, just take two things, sin B into sin C. So next, for computation purpose, we have 
six more formulas so you can see here there are lots of formulas and it is very difficult to remember also so usually some students just by just by seeing these formulas they will skip the unit that means they will skip the module by feeling difficulty but if we can remember it logically then it is very very easy i'll just tell you how logically it can be remembered so if you can remember this first formula then this two formula will be free for you see so just remember this formula and i will tell you how to alter these things see here sin b minus c just write sin s over here in this portion just take sin s and write it here and here sin s minus c just replace this c into a and write it here and the denominator denominator is same so if you can and alter the second equation then this third equation is front of your eyes only see if you take this numerator and write it here take the numerator of the second term and write it here it is ready so in this if you can remember the numerator of this sin thing and the numerator of this cos thing then everything will be in front of your eyes only see the denominator is same here and here this numerator divided by this numerator that is same here only thing you need to remember is this first and this first based on this 3 plus 3, 3 plus 2 these eight formulas we are going to do some problems so according to our syllabus the derivation of these concepts that is derivation of these terms is not present the only thing is we need to remember this formula so since there are many formulas we can remember it logically in a very easy manner so the next very very important concept is napier's rule that is nothing but right hand spherical rule so before that we need to know what is the difference between the normal triangle and right angled triangle normal triangle you know the sum of the all the sides is 180 degree and right angle triangle means all the sides is 180 degree but any one side it should be 90 degree okay so here there may be a variable in the angles but in the right angle any one side should hold 90 degree then it is called as right angle triangle this is normal triangle this is normal right angle triangle if i can draw some arcs like this then it is called as right hand spherical triangle so in this figure you can see right angle spherical triangle because one angle any one angle in this is 90 degree in the previous concept we had studied normal normal spherical triangle but in this concept we are studying right angle spherical triangle that is in all the three angles one angle should be 90 degree then it is called as right angle spherical triangle so the side a is one side of the right angle triangle and the side b is one side of the right angle triangle so the complementary angle of a is 90 minus a the complementary angle of the c is 90 minus c and the complementary of the complementary of the b is 90 minus b so these are the five parts one two three four five parts that i can divide and i will arrange this in a one circle in this circle i will arrange these five parts in some order i will just explain you that order see the order is very important here i am starting the order from a so i am writing a over here so after this what is 90 minus b so a 90 minus b then i am taking b b 90 minus a then the remaining thing is 90 minus c and i will write this here so in this circle if i consider any part as a middle part so for example i'll just consider this as a middle part then the adjacent of this a is called as adjacent part and the opposite of this a is called as opposite part these are adjacent part so now according to the napier's rule then the sign of the middle part is 
tangent of the adjacent part 1 and tangent of the adjacent part 2. Same thing sine of the middle part can also be represented in terms of cos of the opposite part 1 and cos of the opposite part 2. Opposite term will be represented in terms of cos and the adjacent term will be represented in terms of tan. So that is Napier's rule. This is represented according to the Napier's rule. So in this the important concept is what do you mean by spherical? Right angle spherical triangle and arranging it in terms of circle and if we consider this as a middle part which is the adjacent part and during the sign of the middle part what has to be taken. So the next, con the next concept is very important and interesting also that is astronomical triangle. So the astronomical triangle is a triangle which is obtained by joining pole, zenith as well as star. Star means celestial body on a great circle. See I'll just show you here. So this is the triangle. This is astronomical triangle. Okay. It is formed by joining star, pole as well as zenith. If you are joining these three points, then the triangle which is formed is called as astronomical triangle. So you know this is altitude. Okay. If this is altitude, then this is called as co-altitude. The complement of altitude is co-altitude. This angle is altitude and from star to zenith, this is called as co-altitude. So I'll take alpha as altitude and this will be 90 minus alpha that is co-altitude will be 90 minus alpha. So if this is the latitude then this will be the complement of latitude. Okay. So that is 90 minus latitude. So latitude I will take it as theta then this will be 90 minus theta. Similarly this will be the co-declination that is 90 minus delta. I will just take this triangle and I will derive some expression. Okay. Just in the similar manner, I will take this tri triangle over here. So the same triangle I am writing here. So let me take this star, the point of this star as M and this is Zenith that is Z. I showed this pole as P. Okay. That is 90 minus theta, 90 minus alpha, 90 minus delta. So the cos A of this thing, I am getting this expression. So later cos of 90 minus x is sin x. So I am writing sin delta. Cos of 90 minus x, same thing sin delta. Here same thing. Divided by sin of 90 minus x is cos x. Sin of 90 minus x is cos x. Okay. Then this is the final formula that I had written here. See here. I am just substituting these terms with this term. When I am substituting this with this, that is sin s divided by cos alpha into cos theta minus sin, sin by cos is tan alpha cos by sin is sorry again sin alpha by sin alpha sin alpha by cos alpha tan alpha sin theta by cos theta is tan theta i think you people know this basic substitution so i will take this as expression one so that's all for the session in the next session we will see some more concepts and we will solve some numerical problems. So finally I request you people to press the subscribe button and get subscribed to my YouTube channel. Thank you one and all. Meet you in the next session of our online video tutorial of Smart Engineering Academy. Thank you one and all.